Warzone can be a really difficult game, with the whole premise being built around beating 149 other players to get a win. Well, that is no easy task. What if I told you there was a way to get a lot better at the game to help you get more kills and wins? Well, look no further, I'm about to give you 29 tips that will help you do just that. Number one, the first tip starts when you jump from the plane. Look at your minimap and identify where you want to go. My suggestion is to pick somewhere a little off the plane line, pick a contract and complete it to give you a stockpile of cash that will allow you to buy UAVs, self revives, gas masks and a loadout. This makes for a really good start to a game. Number two, this is probably one of the most common mistakes I see players do all the time. Always reload your weapon before plating. This is pretty much a hard and fast rule that applies to every situation. Unless your gun has enough bullets to comfortably kill at least one enemy, you should always be reloading first. As if you get caught out with an empty magazine but full on plates, you're not going to win that fight. Whereas if you have a full magazine but no plates, you can catch your enemy off guard, outplay them, or just trade with them and back off and wait to fight another day. By reloading first, you'll at least give yourself a chance at beating your enemies. Number three, this is another big one that I see and often gets people stuck in some pretty bad situations. Don't always shoot the moment that you see someone. I know this can feel odd in a first person shooter, but it can be so important in a number of situations. As Warzone is more about gaining the tactical advantage over your enemy than just getting some bullets in and hoping for the best. Unless you're already being shot at or the enemy has already spotted you, then take a moment to think, can I wait for this enemy to leave cover before I shoot, meaning I'm more likely to secure my kill? Or will shooting that enemy give my position away leading to me being pinned down in an unfavorable situation or just stop me rotating away safely from the incoming gas. But as I mentioned, don't always be trigger happy and take a moment to think if this fight could negatively impact you. You'll learn to apply this tip better with time and experience. And number four, stop looting so much. Yes, there is nothing wrong with opening those boxes that you run past. However, do you need to loot that house over there whilst the gas is coming in or enemies are nearby when you already have 10k in cash, a full loadout, a self revive and a gas mask? No, probably not. Focus on your positioning and make sure you're in the best spot possible. Or if you're feeling kill hungry, then go find some enemies and delete them from the game. And if you're super worried about loot, you're more likely to find better loot from the bodies of your dead enemies than in random boxes. Number five use your tactical map more. This one is huge. You will notice high skill players checking their map far more often than low skill players as the elite check their maps constantly. Hear a shot that's not immediately close by, open up your map and ping the red dot. This will save you countless times. On top of this, it can really help with your positioning as as each circle closes, check your map as running around Caldera aimlessly is not a good idea and will often lead you to getting killed. So check your map, see where the next circle is and plan your route or next location accordingly. Number six, change your audio settings. Audio in Warzone isn't great at the best of times, so make sure you sort your settings out as the base ones are pretty terrible. First of all, make sure mono audio is off as this stops you getting directional audio if turned on. Set your audio mix to boost low to amplify footsteps. As I know I have been, but I've been caught out footsteps countless times, but this really just lifts that volume of the footsteps up to help you hear them that little bit better change your music to zero as it drowns out sounds that you need to hear and you don't need to hear some amazing soundtrack because Warzone soundtrack isn't that immense anyway. Next one, reduce dialogue volume massively. I have mine on around 20 to 30%. Again, this can just drown out noises that you need to hear. I have my cinematics volume off for the same reasons I have the other ones reduced. It's just unnecessary noise. Turn war tracks off as you just don't need music being blasted down your ears as again, this just stops you listening to things that you need to hear. And lastly, make sure your effects and master volume are at 100% to allow you to hear the sounds that you need to hear at full volume. Number seven, and this one could be quite fun, that parkour is king. There are so many jump spots hidden around Caldera that can give you a massive tactical advantage over your enemy that can just help you grab them by surprise as one moment you can be on the ground floor of a building and then the next you can be shooting them from the roof of the exact same building. This takes time to learn the best spots, but take a moment to look at objects or buildings and think, can I mantle onto that? And if so, give it a whirl. Do you know, this is more useful to learn when you're not being shot at, but just spend a little bit of time just practicing little jumps there's a lot out there that can get you into some really handy little locations. Again, this is something that will help with time, but will go a long way with helping you win gunfights, as if an enemy sees you on the ground floor of a building, they're not often watching that roof, so it will give you a chance to catch them off guard a little. Number eight, this sort of attaches itself to the last tip, but stop re-peeking from the same window or angle. 
Think about it. When you have someone pinned down, you are watching where you've last seen them. So your enemy is very likely to be doing the same thing to you. So make sure you try at least a different window or around the other side of the rock or even get onto the roof as then your enemy has to react to you as opposed to dictating the fight, giving you the advantage. Number nine, stop staying still whilst fighting an enemy. As targets that aren't moving around are much easier to hit than ones that won't stop flying around on your screen. Now, I'm not saying start sprinting mid gunfight, but if you and an enemy are both shooting at each other, make sure you're strafing from left to right, but don't forget to adjust your aim accordingly as that can lead you into some pretty bad situations. And if you wanna take it up a level, integrate drop shotting and jump shotting into your movement to make you far more unpredictable to enemies. Number 10, start centering your crosshairs. Now you need to start putting your crosshairs where you expect enemies to be coming from, as opposed to aiming down at the ground or up at the sky. Now, by having your crosshairs on where you think your enemies are likely to be appearing from, this saves you time from having to snap your aim onto enemies and will minimize the amount that you get caught out, giving you much more of a fighting chance every single time. Number 11, this next tip is great for running away from long range fights or if you have someone trying to snipe you, start zigzagging as it makes your movement far less predictable and therefore much harder to hit. You can also throw sliding into the mix, again, just in general making you harder to hit. Number 12, for you PC players out there, change your field of view to 120 and under advanced, change field of view to affected. Not only does this give you loads more clarity of what's going on around you by giving you a wider field of view, but it will also reduce visual recoil by a lot, making it much easier to stay on target on your enemies. Number 13, turn auto parachute off. As you want full control of your movement and don't wanna be limited by the game saying you need to open your parachute at a certain point. Yes, this one does take a long time to get used to and you will splat on the ground quite often in the early days. I know I did at the very least, but once you get used to it, it will give you a huge advantage over other players that don't have this turned off as your mobility will be much better than theirs. Number 14, change your camera movement to 50%, which is the lowest possible. As if your screen is shaking around all over the place, it can be really distracting, but can make it hard to stay on target when enemies are shooting at you. I've also seen some cases of this making people feel queasy when it's 100%, so it helps out there too. Number 15, start working on your positioning as it is key to winning a game of Warzone. Keeping the high ground or the best bit of cover available towards the end circle can make a huge difference between winning and losing a game. Yes, you will see some streamers with insane amounts of kills ditching their cover in favor of gunfights, but that's because they're much better at the game than you or I. So they can give up their tactical advantage as they're extremely likely to outgun you, but for you, keep the advantage, keep the best location on the map and get those kills much more freely. Number 16, this is a really small one, but can come in really useful sometimes. You can blow up C4 whilst downed. So if you've thrown it out already and someone knocks you and is running at you, guess what? You can blow it up and take them out too. And yeah, this has helped me out in countless locations where I've laid up a vehicle or something and someone's gone to jump in it and I've managed to get the kill. Number 17, change your colorblind settings to Deuteranopia and colorblind target to both. This makes the game far more vibrant and can make it a lot easier to spot enemies. Number 18, utilize your parachute. I can't explain the amount of times this has gotten me out of trouble in Caldera. With this map having so many cliffs and high points that you can jump off and pull your parachute, you can jump off a lot of sections and travel hundreds of meters without landing, giving you an extremely quick getaway. Just make sure that you're using the tree line as cover from your enemies as they try and shoot you whilst floating away. Number 19, you will always enter and exit a vehicle from the left unless the left side is completely blocked. Start using this the next time you go to fight an enemy as you can exit from the left and use the vehicle as cover from them as opposed to flinging yourself into the open in front of the enemies, meaning you're just gonna be quite visible to them and not have any cover in front of you. Number 20, most guns have a recoil pattern of going up and right. However, some go up and left such as the Ram 7. So if you're pretty new to the game and you do struggle with recoil control, I'd stick to the guns that go up and right, which is the vast majority of them. And if you're wondering, just shoot it in the pre-game and watch it go up and right, as most of them do. And if it goes up and left, I'd suggest to swap to something else. Number 21, are your teammates down and you've just grabbed the most wanted to get them all back up again upon completing the contract? A way to reduce the timer on that is by getting kills and opening boxes. However, just bear in mind that people can see your location on the minimap, so finding a balance between looting and hiding or running away can be really valuable here. Number 22, this one I've seen loads of players do wrong. If the circle is closing in the very near future and you've got a recon contract active, wait until it closes before completing the recon contract. Otherwise you're completely wasting the valuable information that the recon contract gives you, which is the location of the next circle. 
Number 23, and this is to do with frag grenades. Throw a frag grenade at a 45 degree angle after holding it for three seconds and it will explode upon impact. This can stop your enemies at being able to run away from it or being able to throw the grenade back. And guess what? Frag grenades absolutely tear your enemies apart and usually leaves them around one shot. Number 24, and this again goes to probably getting your teammates back, supply runs will always go to a buy station roughly four to 500 meters away. You can look at the minimap and judge where it's going to end up to see if it's even worth completing as if the only buy station on the map within that range is about to go into the gas, then you wanna be picking up a different contract. This used to catch me out a lot. However, now I can pretty much predict which buy station I'm gonna have to go to before even picking up the contract. So if you know a bunch of enemies, some really sweaty ones are in a certain location, then you could avoid picking up that contract and just pick up a recon or a scav or something like that instead. Number 25, using an offensive kill streak, so either the precision airstrike or the cluster strike will ping you on the map for everyone to see in the game. But that's only for a short period of time, but nonetheless. And then the bow kill streak will perma ping you until it's been put away or used up. So if you're trying to stay stealthy, reconsider whether you need to use it or not. And no, the ghost perk won't stop this happening either. Number 26, on your loadout, always make sure your close range weapon is first, as if you're in a long range engagement, you will likely have more time to swap between your weapons than if you're stuck in a close range engagement where you often don't have much time to react whatsoever. Number 27, you could only have one bounty contract on you per game, however big game bounties also have this rule but act independently so you can have like quote unquote two bounties on you per game. So getting this on you early game could actually be a bit of a blessing because no one really wants it on them towards the end circle. Number 28, warm up before you jump into a game of Warzone by either heading into a game of plunder or use the pre-game lobby to get your aim and movement on point. Personally, I don't touch plunder, but I know a lot of people that do play it before they jump in as I don't have tons of time to play games and my ADHD makes it pretty boring to me. So I just go ham in the pregame and aim to get northwards of about five kills. And then usually by that point, I'm feeling pretty fresh. And lastly, number 29, having the best guns in the game can be really important as they can give you a massive advantage over your enemies. If you have a higher damage gun with less recoil to manage than what your enemy is using, that can be huge and allow you to win more gunfights and games. Now with almost 150 guns to choose from, I know this can be pretty hard to know what the best ones to use are, but I constantly upload videos of the best loadouts to use, so feel free to check them out. And I've recently just made a loadout for the best beginners loadout in the game, so feel free to check that out on the screen now. Well, thank Thanks for watching guys. If you did enjoy the video, hit that like and subscribe button and I look forward to seeing you in the next one.